All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or afternoon. And this is a video that I've wanted to make for quite a while, and it's just kind of like the tips, mainly what I've learned since I've started this channel. And if you're looking for more tips, more geared towards like the off-road specific genre, um, Adrenaline Junkie actually just came out with a new series, and it's, it's pretty informative. So make sure you check that out. And the other thing is I actually texted Julian this morning to say, hey, I'm shooting this video. I've had this idea since before you told me and launched your video series. So I didn't copy Adrenaline Junkie. I'm just doing my version of this. So we can start off with tip number one, and that is stop thinking about it and just do it. Just jump right in. I've talked to so many people since I've started this channel and every one of them, not every one of them, that's an exaggeration, but a good amount of them have said, you know, I've always thought about starting a channel. Well, just jump in. I mean, if you keep thinking about it and never do it, you're never gonna do it and it'll just be a dream. And so I have my cheat sheet here. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. So point number two is gonna be, and this is a really important one, you have to be passionate about what you're doing videos on. So for me, it's the off-road world. For me, it's the like, outdoors, all that sort of thing. But I mean, don't start a YouTube channel unboxing snowmobile parts if you're not passionate about that because it kind of rubs off and people can tell if they're just half-assing it. If you're passionate about it, the content quality is gonna be better naturally and you're gonna enjoy making it more. So it's kind of a non-starter. Which springboards us into point number three, which is worry about quality of content versus quantity. It's way, way better for you and for your channel if you come out with a really, really good single singular video as opposed to five really average videos. Just make sure your video quality is really good because it shows your passion for what you're filming. Okay, so point number four, and it took me a while to learn this one. Stop trying to figure out the algorithm. So there's this thing called search engine optimization, and you'll hear that term used and thrown around quite a bit. That's where your title, your thumbnail, the description of the video, your tags, everything like that, it, it's allegedly supposed to help you with your search engine. And Stacy's laughing because she knows damn well it doesn't do a thing. It's all about how you do it and what you tag your videos um, with and like Damien said, your thumbnails and everything. But he's right. Don't try and figure it out. Just try and give them as much information as possible. You're never going to figure it out as we know Google is corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> and she's right Google is corrupt <laughs> for a number of reasons uh, yeah I, I can't stress that enough I mean I've talked to enough, uh, quite a few other YouTubers and they all say the same thing you know we'll put together a video that's like oh man this is the best video I've ever done and it'll get middling uh, numbers it won't get anything spectacular and then you'll put out a video that you didn't give a second thought to like okay well it's not my best but I'll put it out and that's the one that'll take off can't explain it wish i could that's just how it is and you if you think about it too much you'll drive yourself crazy number five is make sure you pick a genre and stick to it and it's important because when you build your initial subscriber base they subscribe to you for a reason they subscribe because they like the content you were producing at that time if you start going in and changing the content changing what you're all about you know, halfway through, or sorry, not halfway through, but a year, two years, three years into your channel, whatever it may be, your initial subscriber base is gonna, they're gonna feel alienated and they won't watch anymore. So you have to commit. If you're doing an outdoors channel, don't switch it up to be about gardening two years in. You know, keep it on point. And point number six is kind of debated, but I'm in the camp of monetize right away. YouTube, you have to have 4,000 hours combined watch time and 1,000 subscribers to be eligible for monetization. That's a whole nother can of worms that might be its own video, but I'm of the opinion, as soon as you can monetize, monetize, because then you're, you're starting to get paid for the video production. Point seven is a tip that's really, really important and it's not talked about, and that is have fun and talk to the camera like it's a friend of yours. If you are really awkward at talking to a camera, before you start uploading videos, I suggest you practice talking to a camera, not even recording, just talking to it. Because you have to, part of the appeal of a good YouTube channel is it, 
when you're watching, you feel like the guy or girl in the video is talking to you directly, and it doesn't seem like they're coming off a script. I've always really valued that in a YouTube channel, and in a video, it just feels more personable. So if you have the ability and you're good at talking to a camera, you're already way ahead of about 80% of the YouTubers out there. Because there's countless channels that good content, just so bad at talking. And a lot of people who I've talked to, they say, yeah, you know, the off-road stuff's cool, but we also like to hear talking. You know, we like to hear you talking and we like to hear your opinion on it. It just gives the video a more personal feel. Okay, so for point eight, now this is getting a little bit ahead of you if you're just starting, but it's still a valuable point. Sponsors, don't sell yourself short. Know what you're worth, know your numbers of your channel, and don't accept the first deal that comes along just because, oh, it's the clout of having a sponsor. Don't, just be patient and the good sponsors will come to you. I just got burned by Demon Power Sports. I say burned, it's kind of a bad way to say it, but. Do your research. Make sure you do your research and make sure the company that you're, you know, might be working with is a, a good company that you want to work with. Like I can't speak highly enough about Gator Waiters, Bay Marine, Loud and Dirty, all the channel sponsors. They've been, every one of them has been fantastic. And part of the appeal for me personally when I'm doing, when I'm looking at sponsors or anything like that is, it's not so much about the product or how much free shit I can get. It's a do I want to work and advertise for that particular company. And for, for me so far, I mean Gator Waiters, I'm on point with them, love repping their stuff. Loud and Dirty, same thing. Uh, Bay Marine, same thing. I have no problem sending people there because I know that I personally would go there if I wasn't a YouTuber and I would, you know, I would use Gator Waiters if I wasn't a YouTuber. So just keep that in mind. So for point nine, don't spend tons of money on camera equipment right off the bat. For the first year of this YouTube channel, essentially the first year, I produced every bit of content with an iPhone and a GoPro Hero 7. And that is for editing and everything. I edited the videos on my phone, uploaded from my phone. I didn't have a desktop computer. If there's a will, there's a way. And I was dedicated enough and committed enough to start this venture and get sponsors with one camera that Stacy's holding right now and editing on an outdated iPhone. So with free software. With free software on it. Yeah, it was just iMovie. So don't get fooled into thinking you need to go out and spend $25,000 on cameras and lights and microphones and, you know, a, a $5,000 editing computer with Bose headphones and all that. You don't need it. You don't need it right off the bat. It's really cool to have. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's cool to have. And at times, would it be nice if I had a drone? Yeah, of course. I'd love to have a drone. I'd love to have a big DSLR with an external mic for those more stationary shots. I'd love that stuff, but it's... I've been doing well with what I've got so far and until the channel is making enough money to actually justify purchasing those items, I'm just going to keep rolling. Literally. So, yeah, literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> For point 10, again this is kind of debated, but your subscriber count doesn't matter as much as total overall views and that's coming from the monetization uh, side of it because it's based on views right so if you if you don't have a lot of subscribers but you've done some review videos that are getting really really good reviews or really good views sorry then you're gonna be making more money on that and the sub count doesn't matter again it depends kind of on the genre you're in so yes I'm outdoors and I do ride videos but I also do review videos on off-road vehicles and those those videos are my bread and butter that's what I make the most money on like we did a review of the uh, an X3 Maverick, by far the biggest video on my channel, and it's made me the most money. So, catering your videos to specific, you know, the certain 15 subscribers who really want something, yes, you have to do that, but you also have to do videos that are going to get views, like how-to videos, review videos, unboxing videos. They're boring, they're dry, they're so horrible to edit because it's so dry but they get views and in the beginning it's about getting views so for point number 11 we have a, i guess kind of a truth bomb and the truth bomb is youtube isn't for everyone if you're trying and it's not building 
then you either have to change your approach or maybe you just suck. Sorry to be blunt, but that's pretty much it. And the other facet of that or the other side of that is it's not for everyone because it's actually a lot of work. It's not for us, it's even more because of logistical issues, but that's besides the point. It's beyond just turning the camera on and letting it roll and catching everything. No, 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 no. It's not like that. We have to constantly stop, get out of the machine. Stacy has, either Stacy or in the beginning it was me, I'd have to run ahead, film everyone else, then go back, do the obstacle. And in Stacy's case, where she's going ahead, sometimes she has to walk through a water hole that she's never done before. Slippery rocks, slippery conditions, stuff like that, just to film every everyone else go through it. And then she still has to run and catch up to the machines. So there's that side. Damien's of version of Weight Watchers for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the other side of it, which is all the post-production stuff. You know, it, I tend to edit videos fairly quick, maybe three, four hours, but that's because I don't do much like color grading or anything fancy like that because it's more, for me, it's more about the content. And fortunately, I'm pretty good at monologues just off the top of my head. So I don't need too many jump cuts when I'm just doing a video just like this. So if you're not prepared for the work that no one else sees but you, and you're not prepared to actually commit to doing that stuff, then don't do it. Because your videos are gonna come out subpar, they aren't gonna be good. And at the end of the day, you want to actually produce good content. Hey, <laughs> we just had to wait for a truck to go by that was on the train tracks. Um, so rounding out the list, point number 12 is don't be discouraged by poor numbers early on. Now I get that kind of contradicts what I was saying in my last point, but you're a brand new channel. You have no subscribers, no views. Well, sorry, your mom probably subscribed to your channel uh. out of sympathy. <laughs> you know, five subscribers is nothing off the bat. And now I'm not a big YouTuber, I know that, but I do know damn well early on. It's tough when you film a video, it's really good content, you're in love with it. You post it and you check, you know, two or three days later and it's got like 70 views. It is disheartening. And if you're producing good content though, those 70 people, a good, a good portion of them will subscribe and then that's how it uh, grows. It's, it's not a uh, like an Instagram following where you can build it up overnight with a couple really good pictures. It's not like that. This is a labor of love. And in terms of a business strategy or a business option, it is an actual business model. There is a business here. It's just extremely long term. I hope this was informative. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, rock hard, ride free, and I'll see you on the next one.